recording for posterity. This is the OSC Enterprise session. We learn how to print 3D printed wallets. That's pretty sweet. And what goes in them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most part. This is a 3D printed wallet. This is what you could do. It's pretty cool. It's a it. thermoplastic era thing. Um, that's the same as you make a gasket or a... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty rubbery. It's a pretty, yeah. pretty cool right, thing. I don't know about this next to your laptops, but if you want it... <laughs> so, uh, would let's... You like, would you like mint in yours? Please, yes. Thank you. So, what is this Enterprise thing about? All right. Well, Enterprise explores the other side of, of the, the build, which is which requires as much development as... But how do you get the little pockets? Uh, it's it's uh, it, the file's online um, on the wiki. So 3D printed wallet. Now uh, you just print it vertically like this. You get you do it like this. So this is we can do this with our printers. We we got to really refine our quality to do that. Um, but yeah, this is really cool. Okay. 3D printed wallet. Uh, sorry, where's the link? So go to my screen. Yeah, sorry. Go to well, you can go join in. Uh, Mm -hmm. Join in on a. It's the same Zoom as. Uh, sex, same Zoom, oh, Zoom thing. Oh. Sharing the screen here. It was and this one, wasn't it? <laughs> <Yes>. uh, sure. <laughs> the link would be. Thank you very much. Uh, so go to today's log, Enterprise Track. On my log, so mm -hmm. MJ Log, Summer X Enterprise Track. So take a look at that. I mean, we talked about intended audience, people who want to have a who so have a serious interest in starting an enterprise around the, around the CD home. So the CD go home right now is talking about the stick frame. We're going to get to the CEB, uh, but that's we can't do that right now because that's a very specific product development effort too. That means we get more things like the brick press and the soil conditioner part nailed out, which we don't have yet. I mean, we've got the brick press pretty much nailed, not the not the soil conditioner. We do look forward to things like in a, later in the summer we actually build the walls. Well, if we get a chance to build some of the columns for the workshop structure, uh, hopefully we have some time on that, then we can do rapid laying of CBs, like as far as the infill walls, like that, that we can we can do. So we can do great efficiency on it. Not there yet. Um, as far as building houses with that, so what, what kind of skills are required? So um, in the enterprise session, we wanted to cover a bunch of different things from tech to to operations and marketing and, and other things. But the one thing is, I would say that any good business would have to start with, let's see, do I, um, with the concept of really understanding a product and value proposition. So maybe maybe what we want to do is, because uh, you know, in, a lot of the questions say around Christians or anybody's um, talk like, or um, Anthony's, it's like, okay, well, what do you got? It's like, that may not be clear, but I think when you start exploring it, what we have here, once we really understand it, we can make a very case for promoting it, a very good case, and get that kind of a clarity um, that attracts people and takes this product to, to sales, which, in my view, like right now, that's not, that's, I don't think that's going to be our problem because I feel like I really understand the value proposition and I feel like there's nothing comparable to that. So the question therefore is execution and the due diligence that comes into that execution. So what is all that? So let's start, let's actually start with the value proposition so that we're very clear about what we're bringing to the world because if we have that, then we have a powerful story. It's like you have to believe that first and then you, ha then you have to believe that that's actually executable or you don't even... Uh, uh, you don't even necessarily have to know how to do it yet, but you have to believe in the value being significant. Because if that value is significant, then you can have the motivation to develop it. It's still the same thing, this 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration. We can come up with any kind of crazy ideas and make them come to life, but the critical ingredient is you have the motivation and there's substance to that claim um, so that the motivation is there on your side and th you're likely to have people actually accept it because it's founded on a good value. So when we talk about this, 
we have to understand. So let's let's just go through it. What we think we have. So point by point, on a CD go home, we know what we're getting into, and why we think this is so powerful. So let's get into that. House value proposition. There's a wiki page. So if you click on that, uh, this is once again from my log. Go to enterprise track. Today's link. And then there's a link to house value proposition. So uh, what kind of things are we trying to develop and um, how much do we believe in it or are we, in fact, I mean, are we missing any things? So, so this is actually editable. Uh, so you guys can also do this. Uh, I'll put, paste the link right now into the chat uh, of the... So if you want to hit the chat, you can get the link of the house value proposition. But this is the thing we really have to start with because that gives us the fuel or inspiration. Like, you know, I feel I'm pretty inspired, like I'm kind of on fire on this because uh, this motivates me and, and I can dream up of things that, that are good and valuable and then pursue them. And that's like, the, that's a beautiful life, right? That's, that's kind of the definition of a beautiful life. So, so here's what I think the house value proposition is that motivates me. So lowest cost, and, and I, of course... In this operation, we're different than many places that we dog food everything. Like some people might critique it. Oh, well, are your customers, you know, are you going to be abusing your customers? Well, no, I am the customer. I test it on myself before I give it to anybody else. That's a powerful thing of accountability that if you have that in your business, power, that's power to you. So. Lowest cost, and, and I go by, like, I start with a dog fooding approach. I say, okay, well, what would I really need that's missing in the marketplace? And therefore, we're working on it. So all of this is about, hey, there's these things that are possible but are missing in the marketplace. Let's get them. So item number one, lowest cost house, lowest cost house per square foot to address the housing issue see what makes housing expensive and solving housing. So naturally, I mean, there's, there's huge costs involved in housing. That is the number one cost in your life. So by starting by saying, oh, we're gonna actually help you on the single number one pressure, economic pressure in your life, that's very valuable. So if we combine, okay, lowest cost possible because we're just doing it, trying to do it most effectively, uh, we are solving a big problem. That is the number one thing when it comes to people looking into their wallet, taking out bills and paying for stuff, that's the first thing they pay for. And there's statistics on that, on the cost of living. You can see that web, web page on the wiki uh, article called Cost of Living. Um, so let's talk about what makes housing expensive. Why is housing expensive today? Labor. Yeah. Huge labor. And the fact that you can hardly get labor these days, as we find, that's one of the biggest challenges. Um, yes, yeah, special. Like a specialization, right? Hmm? Specialization. Specialization. Yeah. One party does not talk to the next. Mm -hmm. Designer does not build. build. Like the feedback loop is, is pretty broken. Like I always talk about how the engineer is not the designer, or like the designer is not the architect, architect is not the builder, the builder is not the user, the user is not the maintainer. In each of these things, you're actually adding cost, and you know we can complexity. Complexity. Yeah. You can uh, you can quantify that. We're not going to go too deep into that right now because we're getting some perspective. So let's look at what are we, what are the things. Um, so if you DIY, now this is one case of DIY. So you know if you can build yourself up, you can definitely reduce costs. But not, not but I mean that's. It's kind of old thinking for us because the DIY is going to be a minor case. Like if we're going to sell housing, we got to talk about producing houses for people because most people are just not going to build their house. They don't have the pressure. It they still solves the problem uh, of cost. It, yeah. But but if you're a DIY person like ourselves or somebody else who wants to do it, that's a huge value. Yeah, but we're not going to wait for them. That's, that's yeah, they're going to be a small part. I mean, the, the conclusion is that that's not going to be the majority of the market, you know, and we'll we can bootstrap you know do a little bit of that but it's not gonna um not gonna scale global because most people don't do it yeah uh, sorry 50 percent labor contractor is typical in practice 
So 50% of the house is typical. Well, so if you're actually doing that labor yourself, I mean, if you have that mojo to do it, if you have the energy to do it, you've got a team or, you know, you've got time to build your, mo like we're solving it by, oh yes, you can build modules a little bit at a time. The Therefore, do we ever bring it down? Uh, I mean, <laughs> Uh, it's, does you have battery to swap? Plug it in. Right. Oh, there we go. Uh, Typically, you get paid 50% labor. So if you build yourself, okay, bam, that's pretty good. So if we're doing it as a business, we are that party, so we're actually getting that 50%. That's the essence of the basic model. It's like 100K, 50K in labor and oversight, the whole management part, that running the enterprise that does it. So that's the basic model. So for a thousand square foot house, you save a minimum of 50,000 if you build it yourself. Um, so the architect typically doesn't work with the tradespeople, so he lets them figure it out. So it's not like us, we're saying, okay, this is exactly how, both in, like in CAD and in bills of materials we're, and instructions, we're saying, do it like this, because we're designing it, we're, we're designing it for that easy build. Like, that's why perhaps, um, like the architect is not going to design for the DIY person with the modules because it's like that's not how things are built. You hire a contractor and they do standard construction. So, well, but what happens is that the architect, they do a general design and then they let the, the tradespeople figure it out. Well, there could be a lot of inefficiency in that. So this, avo this avoids the possibility of smart design at a deep level. Like, yes, you can do that, of course, and it's going to work. But that's why housing is more expensive than it should be. Mm. Or if you're paying attention to, well, I care about the lowest possible cost, which is our promise, I have to look at that. There's no, no way I, I will. So, and that's part of the reason why we're like so delayed because we just can't find an architect that can design this way. Uh, it's very hard. We, we tried quite a bit and still haven't found it. Katerina, what's your professional opinion on that point? <laughs> about finding architects that can actually design this. Is it possible? Can we get an architect to design the house right now? We could get, like, I mean, they're gonna be, it's gonna be someone like a could do it, probably, but we would have to review this work at every step of the way. For buildability kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're like the builder, so we pay attention, like, we know that, okay, this, the way we design it, it's gonna be built this and that way. And we're also adding, okay, make it easy, make it, human scale and all that. So we've got too many requirements. Uh, so people typically... Into one and one engineer that gets it. So an engineering case here, Architects don't, don't take, they don't take uh, structural stuff into account whatsoever. It's yeah. simply the no. design aspect yeah. of a house. They into like how like how yeah. They, and they have no sense. Sometimes they have no sense. Why don't you come up? Of, I don't know. Oh, yeah, I can hear. I'll grab a chair. Uh, they have no sense because they haven't done it. I, I get a sense that Elijah has that stuff, and that's probably why he gets it. This object, because he's one of our favorite advisors. Yeah. Um, but they don't have a sense of some, how, how much hard is something. We just had a discussion with a market and an engineer that they know telling us to go to a pitch roof, and we're saying that a pitch roof is not really DIY. And, but they're not getting it because they don't understand there's so much more danger. But the odds of you falling off the roof yeah. are so much higher. So do you even need an architect? No. I was going to ask that. Um, why? You don't need an architect. Okay, is no, it I just mean, for validation? Design? Just for, to validate our well, design? For architects? Yeah. I mean, I mean what, yeah, I they design their skill set is outside of what, what this is or what we're doing. So. I mean, what do they do? I mean, what does an architect do? They design... It's like... It took us a long time to figure that one out. It's so hard to answer. They do the aesthetics, they do the, the floor plan, and they do the envelope of the building. Meaning all the water, like all the ways in the materials, like you know, okay. the, the materials of the outside of the building. But they are the people who will decide like where the house wrap goes and the flashing and all of that. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I actually compare that to the artist. like. As opposed to like an well, artist. They have a, a technical component that they do the envelope. Yeah. I guess. And they pick materials. Okay. Yeah. But like an artist, like, um, it's a creative process. It's not like you're designing for the technicality of how you build it or specifically, um, specifically what the, 
the en well the engineering of it because they let the, the yeah. engineer figures that out so they'll draw a wall but they're not going to tell you how many studs it's going to have necessarily or like if it's structurally sound they the the engineer still has to get involved in that so um or, or sometimes it just goes directly to the contractor the contractors are the ones who do the majority of the technical, technical design in the single family thing mm -hmm. yeah uh, but in general the so smart design is pretty much not a priority at a deep level for an architect because you pass it on to the to the builder plumber uh, electrical guy let the trades figure it out so we're thinking that this kind of inefficiency will cost you like ten thousand i would say uh, where am i getting that number I don't know. like for example in uh in electric like i i actually take it 5k on electrical and 5k on plumbing because our our plumbing can be done for like five hundred dollars Whereas a typical job would be like five thousand, and electrical, I mean, it's quite simple for what we do mm -hmm. compared to like five thousand and up. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of getting that little ten k there. But it's it's it's, it's more like uh, there's masonry people. Oh, there's many more, yeah. There's just people that do the panels, the, the um, yeah, the walls. Mm -hmm. the so what the we're thing. actually training us. To do is to be the integrated builder which lends itself to high high value generations I, I, you get paid well because you can do a lot of the steps as a generalist and that's that's the basic thing it's uh, it's a really high skill thing So now people who are used Americans are used to houses that have all of those luxuries without considering the construction costs. Every bathroom, every bedroom has a bathroom yeah. or something like that, yeah. And, and it could be like an opposite point, you know what I'm saying, like usually the, the contracts are not that easy to put them together, but still like that's where those costs come also from a little bit like simplifying how to live and we have to be able to sell that. The expectations of a house. Uh, yeah. But this house does not look like other houses mm -hmm. either. You know, it doesn't mean that you're making a lot of sacrifices. You know, uh, like having to go outside to use the bathroom or something. Mm -hmm. But it's still, uh, it, we still have to to sell that. Uh, and it's an environmental issue. Yeah. Like you're going directly yeah. to reduce the energy consumption, the water consumption, right. and even getting into the recycling, yeah. the recycling yeah. part. That simple way of living, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that that needs to be part of the marketing materials, actually. Learn what could be a disadvantage and an advantage in music. Yeah, I mean, it's about, in some way it's voluntary simplicity and like yeah. getting you a little bit of that, uh, definitely. I mean, modern lifestyle, definitely. Yeah. And, and it'll also help us scope the clients because then we won't have a client call you guys up and say, hey, I want three bathrooms, one here. You know what I'm saying? Because if you read the brochure, they're already opt out from buying mm -hmm. the, all, all of us. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Because they're not going to buy the product anyway. It's not, you should talk about sales prevention a little bit. For the line. But sometimes you don't want some clients. It's a, it's a it's a full house, but with with a sort of off grid compatibility in, in the way it's smartly yeah, yeah which is yeah. a selling point for many people. Yeah, yeah, we turn each of these things into a value proposition. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was thinking about um, your clients. I mean, because of the price point, a hundred k, you're looking at a certain. Uh, what, what is it? Um, demographic. Tell, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. a certain demographic. You're not going to get the kind of people who can afford, say, 300,000 mm -hmm. looking for yeah. something like this. Anyway, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, yeah. Like millennials are. Yeah. We'll yeah. get into that. We're thinking It'll it's going to be millennials in, in this country, it's going to be millennials and retirees. Retirees. Yeah. Because um, 
in Europe, there is like a bit of a, there's a safety net. So people, when they retire, they, they have something guaranteed in most countries. I bet it's the same in Sweden, mm -hmm. some, some income. But here, they don't have that. So a lot of what they do is like when they come to, some, some have, but it's not guaranteed. What they do is they'll sell their house, their big house where they raised all of their children who already left, and they buy a smaller one, and then they use the difference to live off of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's very common for retirees to look for a smaller house. Yeah. Um, and my generation prefers more minimalist lifestyles yeah. than millennials. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, point three about cost. So Builder usually, usually does not optimize for build cost to performance issues. Um, it's not really part of the equation. You just build what the guys, the, you know, the owner, or if you're a builder, you're either hired by some developer company, or if you somebody hires you as a builder, you're just building what, what the guy tells you. And a lot of times it's the, the issue of cost, cost of performance, not really considered in that equation. If you're just building, like say a development, you know, you've got the stamped cookie cutter house. I mean, you're just building it the way, the standard way. So uh, those considerations don't don't occur because okay, people are just used to these high mortgages and you know, they just pay for this these crazy houses, and that's just the way it goes. So okay, so point four: builder does not optimize for lifetime cost, but typically for market cost. This so. Things like energy efficiency, which may come from, say, a, a standard feature of photovoltaics on the roof of a CDCA home, they wouldn't like that because, you know, it's a cost on the market, and you gain the benefit of that over a lifetime. So, especially, well, the PVs pay for themselves in energy production. Well, uh, payback time is on the order of two years. So after that, you're literally getting free energy over the years. Yeah, it's cheap, yeah. It adds up. It adds up to hundred, you know, like a hundred bucks, you know, fifty to a hundred bucks a month equivalent. Like for a small home, it may be like twenty-five, fifty dollars. Larger homes, it's more. Uh, and if you put more of it on, then you can be replacing things like all the electric water heaters or like heat pump. You could be running that off solar most of the time and stuff like that. So you can max out the the PVs. But see, that would, that might add cost in in a traditional sense. Whereas here we're saying, yes, we care about lifetime, we care about freeing you up so you have money to do other things, not paying for electricity and water and things that are always bills. Just eliminate those bills. And we can do the solar pretty cheap. I mean, the panels are th 34 cents a watt today. So, I mean, it does not add up to those high costs that typically if you get a, get a house with a PV system, that's um, pre pretty high prices, like three times three or so times more than what we could do it for because we're integrating that by design. It's building integrated. Mm -hmm. Like we actually design the building with that in mind so it's not some massive retrofit or, I mean, that's why I guess a lot of people wouldn't put things on their roof because the roofs are not designed to hold their PV system. It might be like here, around here, you see, everyone's got these ground mounted systems. Nobody can put it on their house because it doesn't fit. That too. They just have the space. Yeah. Well, the issue I mean, it's all on, right? It's not like it's even being used for anything other than growing grass. Oh. But is it the issue with the normal house tiles on the roof? That I think makes it's it hard to mount, or is it the structural? Uh, well, just process? the cost of, of how much it will. Um, you're making penetrations in the roof, so that's that's like redoing your roof. Yeah. And the roofs are expensive, so the labor is expensive. Well, yeah. Especially. And you're falling off slanted roofs. It is also true that around here, when you see a solar panel array, they're much bigger than the first person, or they're at least about the size of the roof. In a single panel? No, no the, the array. That oh, the array, have, yeah. Uh, they'll have an array that is basically the length of this house. I guess it would fit on the roof, but it's just big. Mm. Yeah, so point five is, uh, you get the cookie cutter. Yeah, go ahead. There is food here. How would you guys like to eat this after the session? During yes. The session? Yes, please. Yeah, We've got Thank class. You. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna eat. I'm gonna eat. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> so now getting into custom architecture, like everyone gets the cookie cutter house because if you want to hire a custom architect, that's going to cost you. So here with open source, we actually have that huge advantage, and then we we can implement the FreeCAD Sweet Home Designers, like the work, design workbenches in FreeCAD, like down the road. I mean, this is all coming. Uh, a designer where you basically your website is design 
can buy or whatever like step three step select your house or design your house to hire us or whatever you know this is a simple website it's like just buy buy the thing and you can customize it how, how you want because we can we can have those options yeah and then the last thing is um, developer profit it's 16 to 20 percent so if you were uh, doing like a standard house that takes off 25k like if you're the if you're the builder if you're building for yourself but once again I was talking about DIY which is not really the case mostly so um, so you're left with 40k in materials 25k land like 25k land yeah you could easily get land for that that amount um, so 65k if you build it yourself so you can save yourself 106k for a thousand square foot compared to 171,000 and that's about right like the minimum around here I've heard is 180k so this kind of like if this this math works it's it's working somehow maybe mm -hmm. it's not for the right reasons but typically you're paying like 180 that's around here Midwest which, which is low-cost housing um, so Brian's the people um, next to where Brian wants to buy land there's a thousand square foot house it's actually 180,000 it's built in like the 1950s or whatever so it's an older house um, but that's around here it would be more expensive and more some more popular areas like the coasts so yeah so there's that's uh, part part of the va value proposition so what makes housing expensive we're, we're doing affordable uh, doing it much more afford affordably I think, uh, so time is one of the, one of the reasons oh yeah so I get into that so that's point two here in fact let's let's number these because these are we could actually like say hey this is like number one point we could grade them as what's most important but point number two here uh, you literally you have oh uh, yeah, uh, yeah back in uh okay, uh, seed home value. yeah house value proposition so 10x potential of build time compression using parallel builds man that's why i want to get to right now we don't have enough people in apprenticeship but the real deal is when you can have a team of 12 to 24 people and you're produce, producing houses on a week or two week time scale and then you might do the code approvals like the inspection so that you have to put a break into that kind of schedule but you're literally able to do that so you do multiple houses but on a week time scale and that's that is huge I mean think about a contractor who just simply has to I mean average time is six months six to eight months wow yeah for a house that's weird <laughs> I mean so I it's mean, like yeah we can break that completely with this model if we have trained people to work it and then and we've seen issues about labor like it's hard to find labor um, here we're saying we're training people and we're getting that apprenticeship program off the ground so we are with the in terms of the military part the for the GI Bill that's that's in progress I mean we're gonna be certified to do that like soon mm. so we can actually go and push for like a next wave of people if we want to do that so that's actually pretty exciting people are very good at teamwork too yeah, yeah. Awesome. that's awesome. we're talking like within like a week or two yeah hundred <laughs> Anthony's yeah I mean Brian, that's um, a good party John John Miller did an amazing job I mean he just did it he just took our stuff from the wiki he pretty much formed a lot formalized it and you'll see it it looks like here's an official curriculum it's got all the language and all yeah, that it's, it's pretty cool and he was able to do it this is an example of open documentation for the curriculum part he was basically able to link straight to a bunch of wiki articles mm -hmm. like we have a lot of stuff there like hydraulics 101 here's microcontrollers and he actually was pretty good at selecting the right pages so and he actually had it passed through the Department of Labor people and they were like yeah this looks pretty good man they, they were like they're they're very supportive right now so uh, that's open documentation yeah, yeah that is. so um, but this 10x potential and yeah that's realistic uh, so instead of doing a six months you're talking about so that's like 24 weeks 2.4 weeks man imagine you can manage a crew like that reliably we have our business ducks in a row and we're able to market and sell the schedule you cannot beat that kind of a, a value it's that's definitely huge possible. It's definitely possible. that's huge man and then you can uh, 
time frame include the production of the modules or is just this assembly? It's everything. It's everything. I'm counting right now. If you've got 12 people, what is 12 times one week? It's 500 hours with 12 people. 12 times 8 is 96 hours per day. Assuming everybody knows what they're doing and it's like a team workflow. Yeah. Um, they can do all the modules and all that in stuff. Half a day. But you imagine yeah. like you do the models before even getting started. You can have different models. You can you can do on the site. Mm -hmm. You can have it in your micro factory, just cranking them out in yeah, a controlled yeah. environment with a lot of jigs, yeah. where you know even like overhead hoists where you're moving it over, so it's easy on your body too. So yeah. you can have a very effective so operation. Really is like eight hours is usually office work. Yeah, but that's the same. But workers do not work eight hours at the same rate of productivity because there's a, I've noticed there's a big <coughs> drop at our sales. Mm -hmm. no. so, but with it's the like jigs and ergonomic tables that are at the right height and you know that you don't get as tired, then that could dramatically increase. Yeah, yeah. per house. Yeah, like say part of that management is managing the print cluster. You're printing parts here, so some of the parts are getting made for you. And you just have to hit a computer screen and stuff. So that's that's good. The productivity with with digital assist can really work here. So yeah, that is. I mean, that is. I don't know. Like for reducing the cost or actually generating more revenue. Well, that's a big point. Or solving like because now you can do more. You just can do more. And if you train more people, there's no. Um, how well there what about the risks of actually getting the materials like all the logistics and all of that yeah that has to be in place so that that's pretty much the limit but as far as the actual mechanical process of your building you're, you're screwing and nailing those things together that part is taken out of the equation pretty much in that model mm -hmm. so 500 hours is the goal but if you have so that's one week but if you have 24 people I mean that's still one week. That's one thousand hours if you have twenty-four people. So those numbers gotta add up. Um, they add up even in a worst-case scenario. Say it takes you one thousand hours. I think that this model could also work with one thousand hours, possibly. Um, but we're shooting definitely for like the five hundred, and uh, that's kind of what the numbers are indicating. But we we like part of it is okay. Let's be very specific. What are those? very explicit steps and what is our best guess for how how much time it takes and how do we get each of those numbers to the right state like okay now the stairs were a big deal right well how do we do that in a very rapid time we have to say okay what jigs are we using how do we change the process we can plan all that kind of stuff out and it probably starts with at the wall build there like you're just very rigorous to make sure you're exactly that distance so mm. your job later is of having that all good and easy to cut at one time is that's done you don't have to measure yeah. everything and, and either neither this house or the third one was made on a completely flat flat foundation either so when you have that down that's efficiency is all the way up yeah like, yeah it stacks up so uh, I think uh, getting the foundation very nice uh, high quality that's pretty important um, yep uh, so point three so modular design uh, yeah I mean I think I mean how much did we like just seeing the thing in the two weeks of the builder crash course how much did we see point three the modular design allowing inexperienced builders to build houses build a house like Legos I think we've seen a little bit of that at least uh, people were able everyone in the workshop was able to build the modules and um, help in assembling them. So I think we're meeting meeting that point. And I know we suffered in version two. That was pretty hard. But version three, it's different. It's it was much better, and we can probably do some more things, like just optimize the tabs. Like a lot of the tabs were off. Like we were just fighting that a little bit because people, you know, yeah, those weren't done right. Or yeah, we three D print them with arrows and dots and uh, letters and uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like for example, it could be like you got a kit of tabs and it's all like poker yoke, i.e. You could actually print the letters within the 3D print yeah. itself and say, okay, this is for wall module one. It's all identified and tells you like Top left all corner. that info. Yeah, I think ma yeah. like, like uh, materials 
was also a, a, a big, uh, we spent a lot of money, uh, time there. We like couldn't find the material, we were kind of reusing it. And I feel that like if we could have all the BOMs and like uh, putting it nicely ordered, mm -hmm. it will be so much more efficient. Yeah, uh, like we, the, the house that I was with building, I mean the whole module building phase was super chaotic. Mm -hmm. So it, it's probably like rather extreme how much easier you can make it. Mm -hmm. But even oh, still, it was perfectly possible to build those modules mm -hmm. and put them up. Yeah. 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 I think you can iterate it much, much more. Yeah. So another value proposition is using completely common off the shelf material so that supply chains are resilient. So some people, some builders might say, oh yeah, we use this special thing from whatever, this custom marble from. Spain and all of that or whatever I mean cool but that's not what we do we're we want to make it replicable from just about anywhere and you can s also with ability of substituting materials readily because they're all common common big box store kind of things mm -hmm. and then in the future like 3d printable so getting that really down to it um, working at the level of materials as well not just the design but also there's machine uh, machines that make materials and things like that uh, and actually uh, I'll, I'll add that I don't think I wrote that but the next point would be attention to producing materials uh, ie substituting like import substitution I mean so say with the 3d printing or like with brick like we're gonna start making our bricks, um, making lumber or bricks or 3D prints, etc. Um, we do that. I mean, we haven't really seen the benefit of that yet because we haven't done that enough. But that's at least the, like the value proposition. I, here, I'm kind of saying, okay, that's the intent of what what we want to do with this. We don't necessarily have it right now. Like for point four, uh, we don't have a lot of that. But you know, we did, we did do it with CBs. Like you know, we do have some of it. Uh, okay. So next point is what else? Using right. So that was that. So, so next point is using the the simplest possible design without sacrificing performance. That translates to lower build, build cost, faster build time high quality product so this is uh, can be edited here simplest possible design um, that's important for but first of all we start with a simple box like when we talked to about Berkebeel these people they were saying how do you get it so low cost and we explained it and they're saying oh you're just building a box well yeah it's a uh, it's, <laughs> it's a simple thing <laughs> Um, that's what a it's house what is yeah. <laughs> you know you got to put some systems in there but you know keep it simple keep it most simple um, so it has significant lead and living building challenge qualities so we can get into what lead is the leadership and energy environmental design and living building challenge um, it's things like off-grid energy or uh, natural materials other things that qualify for that but we have we have some of those qualities uh, part of it is actually the buildability part, like the access, uh, part of the actually living building challenge is social issues, that it's affordable. So by virtue of what we're building, we already have a lot of those elements there. Um, and we can actually, uh, we have a presentation on living, I'll show you that thing. Um, so it comes with a standard off-grid option for electricity with 7 kilowatts of PV and 5 kilowatt hour of storage uh, for full off-grid operation in the summer. So in the summer you can do that well, but in um, uh, in the winter, like in this climate, you have to heat, so you wouldn't be able to get away with that. Uh, heating would be required. So uh, we do have uh, we we haven't seen that yet, but we do have some very efficient efficient features, super efficient induction cooktop. So induction so cooktops are more efficient. They are. I always thought they were, but then I was told they were not. But okay. uh, there's two types. There's like radiant and there's induction. Like the red ones, the red, yeah. there's radiant, but also the red is 
induction. Yeah. Um, that is, it's basically all the energy of the electromagnetic field there is going into, into the, the pot. pot. Yeah. If it's it's like none of it is escaping. Like when you have a flame, you know like yeah, eighty percent escape as ex escapes this heat. You just got that hot gas all around. It's heating your house. Um, so we have that induction cooktop. We have energy saving tankless water heater. So it's uh, we have both. We have a tankless water heater. Uh, you, you guys haven't seen it because we didn't get there, but tankless meaning on demand so it never uses electricity except when you turn it on mm -hmm. very efficient we also got the mini tank which is a small tank so it only requires a small it it has a little bit of storage so it requires a small heater element it's only like 1.5 kilowatts like a buffer, a, first you have on demand hot water and then the, the, the it has a little buffer yeah. in there and those are actually when you look at that you can do that well with with solar because it's only 1.5 kilowatts if we have solar then we can run pretty much on that and it's got seven gallons of storage so you can do a little bit at night but not if you have like a bunch of people using a shower and stuff like that um, so we have those features heat pump that works down to negative 23 fahrenheit a super, super efficient shower and water faucets i mean if people like that i like i personally like this brick or shower head it's like three quarters of a gallon per minute and it feels like a strong shower. It's That thing is expensive, it's like 75 bucks for the shower head, but it's a very, very efficient one. What's um, the system, like uh, uh, just pressure and putting It kind of aerates, there's an aeration function in there and it's... Um, pressure and a lot of air. Yeah, but it's... So it washes you but uses less water, is that the idea? And that's the idea, because typical is like two gallons or four gallons per minute. Mm -hmm. Think about that. That's a lot, a lot, lot of water. I mean, like a five-gallon bucket every minute, almost. That's uh, a lot of water. Um, so these are all included. In that's included in the price. That's all priced out in the BOM already. That's in the 42k. Uh, yeah, it's it's really good. That's why you you got to really understand this to say, holy crap, this is actually pretty good. Um, so next point can be built by inexperienced builders well you have to have some skill like you got to know how to use a hammer and tape and drills and stuff like that but yeah someone who's motivated to do it you can certainly learn it absolutely um so you actually like once we actually start producing really nice media showing like really you know the, the process of how you build the modules and all of that if you get good promo materials people will start seeing hey i could do that and definite selling point um, so has a support community for continuing improvement of features well support community that's building it's an open source project so it is immortal right now because it's on the wiki and <laughs> and other docs mm -hmm. in FreeCAD yeah yeah so well we actually backed up in uh, in outer net so we're it's immortal you know outer net no, uh, it's never heard of it. It's uh, it's this. Do they still exist, or did they crumble? Outer net. <laughs> Our wiki went to space already. Oh, it's and now it's called other net. But yeah, it's a thing. Uh, satellite radio and data casting. So you have satellites that are orbiting, and they have, for example, our wiki is up there. Okay. <laughs> so if the world <laughs> collapses, we still have the wiki. It's just point your. Is it the wiki? Well, it's like a couple of years, few years old, so we should update it. The, the world will regress even further if it wasn't there. So, <laughs> right. So, um, provides super efficiency in electricity and water consumption. Now, this gets big over life. If you look at your water and electricity bills, saving about one thousand per year in electricity bills, about one thousand per year in water bills and $9,160 lifetime in toilet paper costs. <laughs> Where's that number coming from? Because I think I'll pay for toilet paper. Well, you um, gotta clean ass every day and it adds up over your lifetime of 76 years. talking about years. stream or? Uh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. we've got Kent's technology. Yeah. Uh, we, we do have a I would like to declare that as a standard feature, uh, standard <laughs> option. <laughs> I mean, I'm Bidet. Sure that, like, it is a standard feature. It's 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, I had one growing up. Nobody in my household used it. It was a house built in the 70s, I think. They don't use it like they use it. Like, you wash, the, like, you wash your feet up or something. Or yeah. Or bathing suit. Yeah. <laughs> You've been to the beach and you're covered yeah. in sand. Yeah, and, yeah. And you take off, yeah. But that's not what it was originally meant. But like, in my mm. parents' house, which was custom built, actually, every single bathroom, including the half bathroom on the... You know, like the one that doesn't have a shower? Yeah. But it's just for the guests. Not the, custom, still but it's yeah. So how do you get one thousand dollars per year in electricity bills, which is very significant? That's like a hundred bucks bill per month or so. Well, if you've got a seven kilowatt system, how much does that produce? It's about six hours, so about forty-two kilowatt hours per day. That's four dollars and twenty cents. If it costs like ten cents a kilowatt hour, it's actually more. And that's accumulated so, with lead acid batteries, or um, I'm actually. I know you want to do hydrogen, but yeah. th that's not in place, right? Yeah. This this thing is where you have a small battery bank of ele of uh, of lead acid, uh -huh. and this assumes that you're actually able to trap a lot of that during those hours that the sun is out. So, for example, you, you're running your your tankless heater, you're running your stove, which is induction cooktop during the day. But that's the max, that's like $4 a day, plus more than $4 times 365, that's over a thousand. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, so that's how that, num that number is gotten. But that's, with seven kilowatts, if you design it, like there will be some people like, I, what I would do is I would do like what we do here, which is a freezer, which you can turn off at night. Mm -hmm. The fridge, where if you have a lot of thermal mass, like we use milk jugs mm -hmm. on the bottom there, which is the horizontal one, that use turn it off at night uh, things like that you can get away with a very small battery bank uh, if you have super efficient lights and all that so you can be very eco yeah. in that and we can sell that like here if you're an eco freak this is what you can do and, and save a lot of money and environment in a, in a, in a, in mod a modern homes house uh, that is built according to uh, building standards modern building standards is also more efficient than older houses like way more efficient, yes. I guess right yeah yeah, yeah. And including this, this ecosystem, I mean, the including the heat. No I mean the heat pump. No like that. Yeah, yeah. It was just I mean, imagine Paper. the heat pump technology where you're cooling all of that, and at least in the daytime, there's sun out in the winter, cooling that all off your off-grid system, so you're not burning fuel like wood or whatever. And you can have like a backup stove if it's nice there's. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So it can be significant. So, so it's a debt-free housing strategy where one can start small and add as needed. So we're designing for expandability. Like we built in those two expansion doors. We built in the second floor uh, bathroom to be completely retrofitable, like very easy, super easy. Like all the plumbing is um, right there for it, for that to happen. Because it's already going up. Right? Yeah, it's like right above it and it's super easy to do it plus the doors that allow you to expand the other thousand square feet towards the back. Mm -hmm. And that's explicitly designed for it. We have the design for the house that goes behind it already. Um, okay, so even the floor plan is taken into account. Yeah, extension. Katrina, how much of Rosebud expansion is planned out already for the floor plan? We pretty much got it, right? The only thing we don't know yet that we have to run by the engineer is whether that back wall can support Or if you need to double the wall, but other than that, yeah, that just, it's just cool, yeah. But it's then one more room, yeah. But if it's not, then you will just have to put a second wall. There's not, you know, there's like yeah. The but the idea of the expandable floor plan yeah, and make that fit, like the layout and everything, all the doors, uh -huh. everything is that's really cool, there's a floor yeah. Floor so so it's financeable using standard methods methods so that a route exists for anyone as long as they can afford to buy land so that's the part actually to develop so say you buy the land um, you go to your bank and say I got this land I'm gonna get I, I wanna get a construction loan to build it you could get that so if you can afford land you can then get a loan to get this house that's that's the idea there and then the, when you have the house it's even easier to get loans for it. Yeah, you can refinance. You can do this funny money stuff like oh, refinancing this, and stuff. This is, a, this is actually a mirror. So I would have to make some mind a little bit just because this is a mirror. Uh, the door is on the left, so the layout is mirrored. Yep. But other than that, um, 
this is all planned wow. out with interior wow. walls and everything. So it's another room. It's another no, it's house. not. Yeah, it's, another it's, house. Yeah. it's another thousand square feet. Yeah. Right. And, and you even get to pool. Yeah, yeah I, still, I noticed yeah. the pool, yeah. Oh, you got it. The pool's already in there. There's a pool and a balcony and another balcony yeah. there. Let's jump into the pool from the roof. Yeah, exactly. Jump into it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and right now it's that's the front we've got. But yeah, I mean it can look yeah. like standard stuff. Yeah. Um. So, what about the financeable? Like, say you want a turnkey build. Well, at that point, you go to a bank, and and the strategy there is like if you're a guy who's paying, like Brian, for example, one thousand two hundred dollars in rent, you can easily get. A bank loan to now you're building yeah. equity so get a loan from the bank say hey I'm just want to buy this house now hey if you're already paying rent to that level you should be able to get a loan so this Absolutely. should be very yeah but then, like if you can buy the land then oh, you can yeah, get yeah. that loan right. Right. what do you mean that's not how banks, banks work there are different types of they're very this is all very boxed there are different types of loans. So someone who has an income and who has proven that they have always paid rent and that they never defaulted on it and that they have credit cards, meaning having a credit card tells the bank that you can be trusted with money and that you'll pay it back. So being in debt in this country is actually a good thing because it's telling the bank it, yeah. that you, you can be trusted. Um, so but that, so that he could get a personal loan. But to get a real estate loan, you have to have collateral, and that's why, like when I got, a, I bought a house in Lisbon. The house is the collateral. If I default, they'll take the house, and that's pretty much everyone's mortgage. That's a mortgage. It's not a loan. It's a mortgage. Yeah, it's but a this very is. It's specific kind of loan. Well, that's consistent. You say to the bank, um, "I'm buying this house. This house is collateral." Oh, right, that right. becomes it's collateral built, right. if it's, it's built. already built. Yeah, so right, we have right, to build right. it. So the only difficulty is getting the money before it's built. Mm -hmm. That's where we, like if we're the builder, we have to come up with that 100K to build or 50K for the materials to build. Mm -hmm. But then we get paid and yes, that can be financed by a bank using standard methods. And that's the reason so why I didn't put it in my PPT yesterday because I, I, I didn't have the money to pay up front to build the house and then sell it. So I didn't know how to do it. PPT? That's PowerPoint. <laughs> yeah. No? <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. But, but uh, um, all right, I lost my time. But. All right. Um, so either if you can afford to buy land, you should in principle be able to get a house or if you're paying rent, you should be able to get a turnkey build. Oh yeah, my question was, is it the industry standard to pay for the house when you get the keys and the house is ready? Is, is there not an onus on the customer to, to, to put in money before the build? Well, that's they're getting a mortgage on it. They're getting that money from the bank the question, and they're paying here's us. The, here's, the, here's the difficulty with what you're saying. Is that you think that they buy the land and you pay for the house that is built no, on the land. Point, no, no. Not that scenario. Situation. Owner builder, you can get the land and you can then develop it. You can get a loan for that. For the route that we're saying for the turnkey build, we have to get the land. We have to build. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Right. But we get the land that they already. They already have a client, so they already decided. You buy this loan. No, you pay. you pay for the land. I understand, but who picks the site? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for example, like with Brian, one thing that we're talking about is like Brian has a lot, but we're probably going to buy the lot and develop it and then sell the whole thing. That's him. That's the mechanics of how it would have to work. So it's kind of, but it's still kind of unusual that's in that what, sense. But that's what uh, you want to do? That's we don't know. Uh, that's what it looks like in order for that to be financeable using what we're saying here. Because mm -hmm. we have to say, we got the lot, we got the house, the bank says, okay, I'll take that as collateral mm -hmm. if I give you the mortgage, Brian. Yeah. So that's... And how big is the lot? Quarter acre, like 0.3 acre. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so anyway, that's... Um, uh, so there is a potential debt-free housing strategy. And the first, in the first place, you're paying much less. Your loan is 100K they're about not 300k or whatever mm -hmm. so 3x 
Come standard with a polished concrete floor. Well, we haven't done that yet. We don't have the concrete polisher. We can do small sections, uh, semi-polished and, and uh, proof of concept urethane. in the corner. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, right now we could do with the power trowel. We can get pretty shiny, and then we could we could varnish it, not varnish it, but like put stone sealer on it so it looks shiny. But it wouldn't be zero maintenance. You'd have to redo that every few years. Um, so that's what we can do right now. But yeah, we got to invest or open source the polisher. And thing. if you want the non-standard option. Is the design differences that need to happen because the floor comes up half an inch or an inch yeah. higher? Because the doors are sitting directly on the concrete in the door. You, when you need to go up, the critical things are the doors. And okay. The doors are sitting on the concrete so they can go up. I guess you may need to shave up a little bit of the utility channel. Uh, to do what? To, to do like the... If you want to do a finished floor on top of Oh, that. yeah. You could do like a little uh, landing and you have a little step up it if you want to do like a wood plank floor or something like that mm -hmm. but we probably design would want to design that from the ground up to be yeah. either the floor model or the the concrete floor model I, okay. I disagree with that I think this is an expendable house so we should start with concrete oh. floor but when they have money they should be able to have another floor if they would like to but the only thing that this the doors okay, that's a valid the proposition we already done because they already have this you can see it here, but they already have that, that height. All the doors have it. When you buy a door. Uh -huh. um, the only thing is the, the, the electric channel, and I don't see that as being a big deal. You just run the your floor up to it. That's it. Mm -hmm. uh, you mean the outlets or the actual wires? Or? No, just the, 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 the wire. Okay. You know so, because the pot is going to be sitting on the concrete, so if you want to add a pot, it will run up to it. Okay. All right. So, um, the only mm -hmm. so it can. What we're saying there is, you can. It's expandable in the sense you can start with a low-cost concrete floor and building up to a more expensive floor if needed. So yeah, that's pretty cool. That's a value proposition in there. Uh, okay. Practical starter home that grows with a family. So the expandability part. But we kind of already did we say that already we didn't yeah yeah um 50k 50k in materials this is if you're building yourself for a thousand square foot house that you can build with a friend in one week we have to show that that's when the kit um the kit that we produce has to be really good like it might have all those 3d printed uh jigs and stuff like that yeah, and uh, that's gonna be hard it, it would be a um, for a single floor no problem uh, for a two floor maybe a little more challenging one week man how do we get this my, one week my, my that's that's tough yeah my instinct is that the diy version has to be single floor single story yeah yeah so that one that's uh based on what we've seen so far that's questionable but once we get the very good efficiencies i don't think that's going to be outside of what we're doing well we got two floors up but what what are the other things to think about plumbing or I mean, plumbing. well we had a lot of people we had a lot of people and with guidance i imagine that you're all by yourself or just the buddy who also you know yes but the, yeah sure uh, we no, don't like, have, like the people who go home and go by themselves you know, you know what i'm saying like hampus could do it he could do it but other people may not like yeah. he could do it with and the and documentation and understanding yeah but you could make a uh, dog food documentation, probably, since we got it, you know, it was kinda, we were kind of scrambling to get it done, but it came up. It feels possible. Yeah. The difference is that we had like 12 people as opposed to, I'm it saying, two not, people. I, yeah, I mean, two people, okay. It's not possible, it sets the barrier quite high. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, like, I, like I said, like, I wanted a house that, like, say, me and two other women could build. It would be really hard for us. Yeah, so yeah, two, but of, uh, two, two women my size to build that. Up. Yeah, if one is a crane operator, it gets easier. Yeah, exactly. About the, yeah. <laughs> one of them is a crane operator. Yeah, like, yeah. In, I, I think that if you don't, if if you just do a one floor house, it's so doable, and you can do a two thousand uh, square foot house, and you can still do it with one friend. Yeah. Like the, the the roof and everything is not complicated. I think the complicated part with two people is taking the models to the second yeah. floor. But how do you address? Because th at that point, yeah, you'll be close to the fifty thousand dollar mark. Martin, but we're gonna have to do this anyway because if we're 
puts the retirees as client, no retiree is going to want stairs. Period. Yeah, we're going to have to do that. No one, um, if, if we're going to get to that, but all of us are going to get there. Uh, <laughs> you wouldn't be able to, to get the, the material process. Right, we can't get th that. It'll be harder. It's more expensive. It'll be a little but it's harder. Like Fifteen or twenty percent more, right? Yeah. It's not twice as much. Mm -hmm. it's, it's yeah. It's not that bad. So it'd be like sixty k. Yeah, but but we have to address the that this is an ableist house, someone mm -hmm. who can walk up and down the stairs, mm -hmm. and that we have to address that situation. So it costs more, but I don't see that we. And it's less do complex. That. It's less complex. In, in, in a lot of senses, yeah. Like it just the stairs, like uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It will go up faster, so it, maybe you you maybe even put save some of that in labor. Yeah, you probably save like uh, yeah, save a little bit on labor. So economic benefit um, over life, the the numbers get pretty crazy. Like what you're actually paying in electricity cost over 30 years of a photovoltaic system, 39k, like. It's expensive not to have it. You save 39k in electricity over 30 years. Mm -hmm. And 31k after investment. What? And 38. It's all depending on, on the amount of sun, sun hours and such, but yeah. Yeah, assuming it's like six sun hours per day at a thousand watts insulation per square meter. Um, water supply costs. Yeah, if we're collecting water. Um, that's 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 not in a standard option. That I mean, a standard option does not really have that water collection built in yet. But if you're collecting water and actually filtering it, that's like 4,500 water supply costs. I mean, um, oh, after I, I forget what I was talking about, like atmospheric water generator that's run on solar, or that was rooftop collection okay but there is potential like there's definite potential that if you're collecting water or getting it from the air which we will like after we open source the atmospheric water generators uh, because we have pv and we can do it uh, for free free electricity um, saving 30k in water over 30 years uh, when you say after investment i i actually don't know what the hell i'm talking about there 31k after investment. I, I think that might be like after buying the system. Um, the electricity could be included within. I think we can go within the 50k price. That probably will fit in there. But other systems like water and things, that's no. But but water does cost you a bit. It's like a thousand bucks a year, still. So I mean, you know, 30k over 30 years. I mean, adds up. So if you're thinking about the lifetime of your house, then that makes sense. And also, I mean, fits in perfectly with other value propositions such as being able to be off grid but being lean from the get go, and also the idea of, of environmentalism. Yeah, uh, yeah, so yeah, absolutely. I mean, we got to pay attention to it. Like water is not free, and then you know we're polluting it and then sending it down the river uh, into centralized processing plants. That's that has a lot of cost in terms of That's pumping and. Marginal cost of like uh, it's 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 a cost that it's not being held into account. Yeah. And uh, well, it's basically all these environmental costs that, that people are not paying and companies are not paying by doing it. So yeah. And who's paying? Uh, us. Uh, Impact on the consequences. Fees. By the consequences. Like I imagine there's a mine that is uh, throwing the residues, and uh, so the mine is not paying for the, the damage for the, on the environment but the population is, is kind of it's externalized it's external. socialized yeah uh, yeah pretty much um, yeah so and more specifically if you can afford 80k up front one time including land then you're saving so that's i got to look into where i got the 31k but that looks like investment into all the off-grid systems i think that i was talking about a full off-grid uh, autonomous house which cost 8,000 uh, and cost 80k up front as opposed to 50k up front so I think I'm talking about 30k additional costs uh, I, I gotta revisit that I forgot okay. what I was talking then you're saving um, 566 month per month on the housing part so that's including 
according to cost of living. Uh, I, I gotta. I'm not so there's about there's what I'm uh, there. there's probably a median rate of or like a average rate of cost for life. So what you've done is you collected all the upfront yeah. costs and then uh, realizing that the system itself is five hundred sixty-six dollars less per month. So yeah, with like the 80K compared to. Eighty k investment, you have a five hundred sixty-six kickback per month. Per month, which means like. Uh, 120 okay. months okay. or 10 years of payback time for that entire system. 10, 10 years is quite a bit of time. Uh, but basically, I think we're comparing that compared to cost of living, the average price people pay for their housing and electricity and bills, we're saving quite a bit, like 566 with the full off grid option. Making your money back in 10 years, that's like a, that's a very good housing market. Yeah. I know you can do that in Medellin, Colombia, but there's not many places where you get those sort of rents with the sort of options. Yep. All right, so next is, uh, so additional options include aquaponic greenhouse food production, so that's huge. We're working on a water recycling system for off-grid water operation in dry and wet climates. Um, yeah, so that's that's that. And then looking at, there were, we're, we were looking at what the kind of costs were for different um, iterations, yeah, yeah, or floor plans. Square, yeah, the floor plans, which were, oh yeah, so one story square. So that's basically if you've got a complete square that's 1,000 square feet, compared to, um, well, this is talking about like a way bigger house, one story non square two-story non-square so that's rosebud and then talking about yeah why the two-story is cheaper but it turned out that the square version okay. was about 37 non-square like okay. 38 two-story 30 okay. and two-story like with one hump on it basically the point was we were getting to a cost of like 30 for the two-story, and I think that was without the carport. And our materials, when we looked at them, were 42K for that one, for everything, including all those appliances and all that, which we still have. So there's less material, less supporting walls with uh, a two-story rather than a square. Uh, like that's yeah, the cost the that drawdown. Yeah. Bigger, bigger parts are roofs and foundations, so they have half the roof and half the foundation, yeah. so that, yeah, yeah. that's where you get the 7,000 difference compared to the square. Yeah, but that's 20, that's 20 not a lot percent. either. That's like 20%, uh, yeah. 30, sometimes it's like 25%, so it's not too bad. But that's um, that's kind of the summary of the value proposition. And, and that's pretty good. So um, kind of reread that and maybe add a few things to it if you see any other things. Because um, if like each of these things can be turned into, okay, here's a particular market and here's a value proposition for that market so you can actually sell the houses Give, communicate effectively what what we've got yeah because it's quite a mouthful and you should do and a, a like one or two of these would be good for okay this market we can kill it in there and just take like one or two of these yeah, and I really, really so. like that I haven't said anything like here in the, in the power right yeah, sure. yeah. So I, just a build time compression build time compression fact. man mm -hmm. That's it, it would be good to have uh, in the future a house value proposition for customers, turnkey customers, and for DIYers because they are different. Yeah. Add it, man. So this is collaborative. Or add yeah, it. I know, I know. Um, yeah, yeah. And that's on a page. Uh, if you go to SH2, the page called SH2, that that's the first item. It's seed home two requirements and value proposition. We're starting with that. We're determining all the kinds of design choices we make through that filter right there. Mm -hmm. And if that filter is well refined, that pretty much says you gotta build it in this particular way. So it makes sense, like why we're we building things the way we are. Uh, but that's it. And that's it for today, people. <laughs> is this what we eat? It's time to go and thank you very much for listening. Bye -bye. We're gonna do no uh, virtual Monday, chicken. So no, no, no.
So oh, sad. Weekends no are off chicken. for <laughs> enterprise sessions Monday yes, to Friday. Much does need any chicken. And I would like to order some chicken. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot. That's session. Um, Absolutely. That's an yes, ma'am. Overview of the value proposition. Thanks. Yeah, the numbers are there. Yeah, the numbers. Numbers are adding up. So. I, keep working. I, I need to sign it. Um, uh, it's uh, John Miller, the person uh, driving the GI Bill. Or Say again. Uh, you mentioned the name John Miller before. Yes, John Miller. Is he working on the GI Bill? Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, so Google outlaws. He's got a nice video of where he comes from. Watch it. It's uh, 